for welcoming Desperado to the team. Say hello to the audience. Hello. All right, so in today's video, I will show you how to create this really cool artistic walk effect in Adobe After Effects. We're going to be using a cool masking technique to create the seamless transition. If you want to follow along with this tutorial using the exact same footage as me, you can download those with the link in the description below for free. To film this effect, I had my friend walking with a gimbal backwards, so I'm just walking in each shot trying to capture the exact same motion. So the same speed of walking, the same posture, and try to have the same distance between your actor and the person holding the camera when you're walking backwards. And do let me know what next videos you would like to see in the comments below. All right, let's open up Adobe After Effects and get started. All right, so here we are in Adobe After Effects. And this is a footage that you can download with a link in the description below. What I'll do is drag one of these into a new composition and then go over to the composition settings. And I will rename this to main comp. I'm going to reset the start time code to zero. And right here, I'll give it 50 seconds to work with. Click OK, and then we can extend the timeline and bring in the other shots here. First, I'm going to overlay all of these because we want to exactly match everything. So if we toggle between these two in by clicking on the eye here, you can see that there's definitely a difference in composition because everything that you see right here has been recorded by Joachim, a friend of mine, and he's using a gimbal while walking backwards. So it's really hard to maintain the exact same composition uh, in your frame. Uh, so also the distance here matters a lot. So what I will do is hold Ctrl and press R on the keyboard and I will find a clip that I want to use as an example. So let's go through all of the clips. Uh, maybe I want to use this clip as an example. And I will first center this completely out because I'm just going to use this as a horizontal reel post. So it doesn't matter that we have um, edges that are yeah, not completely visible. I prefer to be completely centered here. Holding shift will only lock it on the horizontal axis. Once you have that, we can drag out from this razor here. So right here, you see this ruler. And if we click and drag down, we can now match this to my head. And we can also match it to where my feet are supposed to be when I'm not in a walking pose, for example. And then we can also drag these out to my shoulders. And if you hear some weird noises in the background, I apologize, but it's actually my little new cat here. So once you have your measurement down, we can toggle on another one and we can just match this to the same ratio. So we will have to scale this up holding shift. And something like this. Ideally, you're doing this in a pose where you're pretty straight to the camera to match your so uh, shoulders. Enable the other one and without moving the guidelines here, matching another one. And scale this one up as well. And there we go. Now if we're going to toggle between these, you should somewhat match on all of these. Later, we can still correct these, um, but I just want to have a clean setup. And once you've done that, we can hold control and the point comma to remove this and also hold control and R to remove the rulers here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit on my timeline. Let's find the shot that I want to start with. Maybe this one right here. And so I will be walking for, let's say, around two seconds or three seconds. Let's go for three seconds here. And right here, I want to switch to another shot. So I will bring out another shot here, enable it again, and press T on the keyboard, and lower the opacity to 50%. So the camera definitely moves a little bit. So what you can do is go to the beginning here, press P on the keyboard, click on the stopwatch, and like right here, recenter your shot. If you'd like to, that's completely up to you. I'm also going to offset this a little bit further into time so you don't see it stopping anywhere. And then for this shot, we're going to match it up to the previous shot as close as possible. And we're also going to find a moment where the walk is very similar. 
like around here and reposition it. Looks fairly similar. Maybe a little bit smaller here. Something like this. Looks great. And so we're going to do the transition here. Also in moments where you see it's not completely lining up, we're going to press P on the keyboard, click on the stopwatch for to create a keyframe and then just rematch it over a few frames. So it's around the same here. And once you have that, we can now create a mask here where this footage disappears. And so before we continue from here, I'm also going to make this a vertical composition. So before I do that, I'm going to click on each video file and I'm going to hold Control Shift and press C and leave all the attributes and just call this uh, peer shot comp. And then we are going to enable this also Control Shift C, leave all attributes and we're going to call this grass shot comp and do this for all of these video files. And then disable all of them. We're going to right click composition settings. We're going to change the width here to 1080 with a height of 1920 and click OK. And so now we have our resolution for an Instagram reel. So I'm going to toggle off this title action safety grid and we have our next clip here. So what I'll do is create a new solid layer from here, make comp size and call this mask one, click OK. And then right here where we are at around two seconds, 30, I'm going to press S on the keyboard, click on the stopwatch and around three seconds, we're going to set it to zero and then hold control shift and D to split the layer and delete this part here. For this last keyframe, we can also right click keyframe assistance, easy ease and go into the graph editor and then click on the scale here, scroll down until you see this handle and then stretch it out a little bit. That's going to make it look like it's actually traveling a farther distance. Okay, and now we can actually use this footage to use this uh, solid layer as a mask. So we're going to drag this to this mask. And if you don't see this, you can toggle the switches right here. You have here the track mat feature. You can also simply click here in the track mat. You switch modes here and select mask one. So now you will see that this clip is disappearing. And if we enable this shot right here, press T on the keyboard and set it to 100% and bring it below this clip, we now reveal our other clip here. And so this is great. The only problem here is that it looks like it's not disappearing behind me, but we're going to solve that later. First, we're going to continue to the other shots as well. So bring this shot right here below it, enable it. And we're going to click on this layer, press T on the keyboard, set it to 50%. And right here around four seconds, 30, we want to switch it. And we can already see that it's pretty much lined up, which is great. So. A little bit of luck here. Let's see if we can get an even better one. Okay, so I'm not close enough here, so I'm actually going to scale it up and bring it down. And once it somewhat matches up, we want to do the same thing so we can create a new solid layer, call it mask two. We can simply copy these keyframes, control C and then click on mask two, control V, press U on the keyboard. And then it's already at the right timing here. All we have to do is use this clip here and parent it to mask two. And to make it easier, we have this mask above our shot. We're also going to place this one above our shot. So we know what is masking what. And then at the end here, we can hold control shift and D and delete this part. We can now go to the last shot and bring it below this one. Also, restore the opacity for this shot to back to 100. And then for this shot, press E on the keyboard and set it to 50%. Go all the way 
towards the end here, maybe around seven seconds, 30. And then right here, we're going to match this one as close as possible. So we're going to create a new solid, solid mask three, click OK, bring it above the beach shot. And we're going to fragment it. And also right here, control V to paste the keyframes that we copied earlier, if you still have them. Otherwise, go here, press U on the keyboard, select the keyframes, control and C, and then click here, control V to paste them. And then we can also restore the opacity here back to 100%. And again, we will have the same effect where it disappears. Okay, great. And then from here, we can see how long we want to make it last. And if you want, you can actually bring the original video here back. I'm also going to press P on the keyboard here where this clip begins and hold shift, press S on the keyboard and create keyframes for both of these. And then towards the end, I see I'm way closer to the camera. So Joachim, do a better job next time, okay? <laughs> So we're just going to keyframe this and bring it back into position. That looks great. And if you still want a difference here, we can press P on the keyboard for this clip and hold shift, press S, create keyframes and then select this clip and this clip together and just bring it over to the center as well, because I see it's not perfectly centered. And then for the rest of the clip, we want to make sure that it's offset here. Okay, so if you want the masks to appear a little bit slower, what you can do is click here, click on your masks, holding control, press U on the keyboard, and then select this first keyframe for all of these, and then select the first keyframe for all of these, and then just extract it a little bit and just like this. And maybe for this clip, we'll have to offset it a little bit again. And so right here, we can search for a similar pose and bring it into position. And so here we have our effect. What I will do is click on all of these solids here for the mask, toggle the switches and enable motion blur for these. We see some motion blur when it's moving. And then also what I want to do is when it's close to my body, I actually want my other body to appear. So to do that, and so right here, we're going to take our other clip here, control D to duplicate, bring this to the end point, and then go to the end of your mask here and bring it to the end point and then bring this all the way up. And so in here, we want to go to the beginning of this point and then go over to the Roto Brush tool and double click on it. And that will open this new window where we can bring the resolution back to full and rotoscope myself out. Do this as good as you can. And if you want to remove parts, hold Alt and drag between the legs here, for example, between the arms. And it doesn't have to be perfect. So once you're done, you're going to click here on freeze and that will freeze the roto. And then you will see the result of what we have just done. Once you're done, you can close this window. And so you can now see that this panel is kind of disappearing behind myself. So this is really cool. What I will also do is right click new and create an adjustment layer. And I will go over to the effects and presets and search for the shake preset, which is a free preset that you can download at filmbro.com. And we're going to apply that right here. And then make sure nothing is selected at tile center, right click, set, anchor point, right click, reset, and the same for position. And then press U on the keyboard and zoom in a little bit to make sure that these keyframes match your action here. And so right here, we can extract this a little bit now we have a small shake when it appears. And what you can do here is on each time that it's appearing, we can copy these keyframes and paste them. We have a small shake each time this panel passes. 
And then apart from that, we're going over here where we have another panel. Like right here, duplicate it, trim it until here and until the end of this keyframe. And then bring it above this clip here. And we're going to do the same thing for this one here. Right here, duplicate this clip, bring it in and bring it in here. And then we're going to drag this above here. And now go back to your roto brush tool, double click here. And apparently I duplicated the wrong one, so duplicate this one here. Trim it and bring it above here. There we go. Click on the roto brush tool, double click and rotoscope yourself out here and make sure that you're working in full resolution while doing this. And once you see that your roto is going good, we can freeze this one as well. Okay, once that's done, go back to your main comp and take this last clip as well. We're going to double click on that one. Okay, so that looks great. And if you still want to take it a step further, you can now also apply masking effects to your roto here. So we can right click, create a new solid layer, and we're going to call this mask roto one. Click OK and then trim it to this clip. Go to the end, Control Shift D, delete. And so now we have this mask here. And what I will apply to this mask is fractal noise. Apply it right here and change the complexity to something like a two and increase the contrast drastically, just like this. And then we can bring this down until you don't see anything. I'm also going to clip this. And so right here, it's completely dark a little bit more and click here on the brightness and then go further into time and hold shift and drag it up. So it goes a little bit faster and better. There we go. So now it's completely white. So now we have this kind of transition. What you can do is toggle the switches here until you see the track mat. And then for the uh, roto here, we can mask this here. But now we have to click on this icon here. It will invert it to a luma mat. So in this case, we can now see that the roto is appearing gradually. And we can also shift this over to appear faster. And of course, extend the time a little bit. And we can also press U on the keyboard and then bring this closer, for example and make sure that we have a nice gradual rotation, nice gradual transition of our roto. And just like this, we can duplicate this mask effect and bring it over here, for example, and drag it down. And then this roto also use a luma mat and then duplicate it one more time, bring it just above the roto, bring it over. Also make sure that these are extended all the way for to cover the clip. And then this one, we're going to parent it to this one and also luma mat it. Okay, and so in this case, you will see that when we have this transition, this kind of effect appears. So this is completely up to your own personal taste, um, but this is a little extra that you can experiment with. <laughs> Alright, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you can check out my other videos like the one right here and I hope to see you in the next one. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell to stay notified when I upload new videos and I hope to catch you in the next one. Until then, create epic videos. Bye!